guys, welcome back. In today's video, we will reveal 6 things you should never put on your credit card application and how you should answer instead. There are some things that you should never put on a credit card application as they cause concern for underwriters. Welcome to Finance Simple, where money is made easy. And we'll tell you what those things are. Have you ever wondered why you are not getting automatic approvals on credit applications? Look no further. This video is short and to the point. We will cover personal and business credit application strategies. Now grab something to take notes because we are revealing some real gems here. The first rule is that you should never say you are retired or self-employed. Why? To an underwriter, that is a massive red flag that implies you may be unable to pay your bills. You simply have a limited budget. If you are retired, you might have used all of your savings on general expenses or playing every golf hole in Clearwater, Florida. You should never list yourself as retired because that immediately raises credit risk concerns for an underwriter as retired people are most often on a fixed income. The other is self-employed. When an underwriter sees self-employed, they immediately have concern that you may not be able to generate consistent income and leave yourself in a less than ideal financial position. Simply put, you don't want to give the underwriter the impression that your income is limited or unstable. Number 2. You should never enter an income that is either too high or too low. Why? If the DTI ratio is too low, you might not be able to pass it. Wait a minute, what is DTI? Debt to income. If you have a personal loan, you have to pay rent, a car loan, student debts, and so on. A particular ratio must be reached before they feel comfortable lending to you and each ratio is different with underwriters. Let's say you claim to earn $30,000 a year your rent is $1,500 and your car payment is $600. Right now, you're earning $2,100 every month, which is $30,000 annually. That is a 100% DTI and you will never get approved with something like that. You also shouldn't claim to be Jeff Bezos or Bill Gates and say things like, I make a million dollars a year, $500,000 a year, $400,000 a year. That could raise a red signal in the credit card application. You can get a call asking you to prove it, and if you can't, you might get turned down. You might end up on a list. Although you won't be arrested, please don't attempt to be outright fraudulent. You would rather include something called household income on. That merely says, hey, I can cover expenses and have extra money for discretionary expenses using my income and the income of my spouse. There is also expected income, which will be discussed in a moment. However, in general, be sure that the revenue is something you can support or defend. It should be neither too high nor too low, right? You'd never want to come across as a credit risk and you need to appear credible. Every underwriter undoubtedly has their own rules regarding that and you have to do your best to appeal to them. On to the business side now. Take your time and think things through. Remember you are trying to make a good impression and provide enough information that the underwriters can feel comfortable with your business. When asked what you do, don't just say, oh, I do business sales. Consider the industry standards and try to fit your business into something that speaks to stability and opportunity. Underwriters are attempting to categorize your company to determine whether or not you pose a significant risk. It helps them determine if they want to loan you money. They place you on a SIC code or NICS code. That essentially informs the bank, the underwriter, about the nature of your business. There are some companies that banks are reluctant to lend to. They instead have to borrow money from different lenders. However, if you say, hey, I fix credit, I'd be happy to sell you marijuana, there is absolutely no chance you would get that automated approval. That is a major factor on why certain applications for personal or corporate loans are declined. Like all games, you must understand the rules to play well. This is no different. Creditors are more likely to say, Hey, we don't want self-employed or retired people. Hey, we don't want that low of an income. Or, we don't think you have that type of income. On the business side, Hey, you're in a high-risk business. We don't feel comfortable lending to you. Especially with the looming recession, there could be a breakdown. Therefore, you must project the image of a very reliable borrower. You want to come across as a respectable individual or business. The next question is, why do you want these funds? You shouldn't say, so that I can purchase real estate 
I can now start a marijuana farm, then I can open a strip club. These are the kinds of things that individuals shouldn't say. You should instead say, I need this for marketing purposes, working capital, and business expansion. Underwriters want to hear phrases like those. They want to know that you can pay the bills and that you make on-time payments. They merely want to know that you are a modest local company attempting to help the world and that you require this funding in order to do so. It all depends on how you present yourself on the credit application because most credit applications only ask for information about your income rather than actually looking at you. An estimate of 75-80% to 80 is stated income but if you enter anything on the credit app that may seem impossible, they can require you to provide proof of your income. On another note, your credit score also plays a role. You must unquestionably portray yourself well if your credit score is low. It should also be emphasized that, for the most part, all of these are algorithms. These credit card applications are often algorithms. This explains why you don't receive those instant approvals. It's because your name may be spelt wrong if you check your TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian reports. Addresses may even be displayed differently. If things don't precisely line up, they might start a manual review. You might notice various employment, different salary levels, and so many people have discrepancies on these secondary bureaus that report to the main three. In order to ensure that everything is uniform throughout and always congruent, you should clean up your secondary bureaus. This includes your LexisNexis, SageStream, and all of those. The reason you aren't getting automatic approvals is because all of this stuff is automated using AI, robotics, and algorithms. If an underwriter needs to manually review something, they will do so, but remember that each underwriter has different methods. Then, your small credit unions will now be reviewed manually. The majority of the time, automatic approvals will be granted by large and middle-sized banks. But, due to the inconsistency between the subsidiary agencies and the main bureaus, you do not receive automatic approvals. So, access and check all three of your credit reports, look through them, examine them, and you'll see that that might be the problem. Make sure to include predicted income for the household as well. In business, you never know what you're going to make from one year to the next. If your company is brand new, you don't have any historical data to base off of, you have your projected income to help you. If last year's income was higher than you projected, you would base it on that. Simple, right? You must ensure that you can support or provide evidence for all of the information you provide on the credit card application. Those are the things you should never include on a credit card application and why you are not getting those automated approvals throughout your processes. Always stay focused on learning and developing discipline. Get educated, make a plan, and stay the course. If you found this informative, smash the like button. Please share it with a friend, comment down below, and let us know what would you like to have made finance simple next. And definitely subscribe so you don't miss new content. Keep your head up, ears open, and always search for knowledge. See you soon!